Hello class and welcome to this Jaws NES walkthrough right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Briggins. I'm your instructor, Professor Briggins, and after last week, our longest class ever on this channel, four hours, as we covered Final Fantasy for the NES head to toe, complete walkthrough, you can check that out, it's on the channel, but a four hour walkthrough, after all that, I figured the TAs and I, we could use a day at the beach. But uh, you know how it goes, just when you thought it was safe to get back in the water, it turns out to be an LJN game, and that's what we're playing today in Jaws. In terms of difficulty, Jaws isn't too bad actually, especially compared to other LJN titles, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a 4 out of 10, which on the frustration scale equates to biting down on your controller, probably during the strobe portion at the end of the game, which uh, it's impressive to say, but it might be the most annoying part of any LJN title ever made, so that's saying something, but uh, the game itself isn't too bad, especially compared to some other LJN titles, but we'll talk about that when we get into the game. Let's run the intro and get into this Jaws NES walkthrough right here on Video Games 101. As we start a new game, let's take a look at the controls for Jaws. As you can see, very simple. Attack with B, move around. Not much else going on until the end, but uh, let's take a look now at the Briggs notes. The keys to beating Jaws in this Jaws NES walkthrough. First, avoid the bottoms and the sides when you're on the diving screen here. That's where the enemies spawn from, and uh, you'll have no time to react if you're on the side when an enemy pops out. So stay more in the middle, near the top. That gives you more time to react. Secondly, take on Jaws around power level 5, give or take. Uh, we'll talk about the power levels in just a bit, but this game's like another LJN title, Friday the 13th, in that the longer you hang around, the more difficult it becomes. So we want to take down Jaws as quickly as possible. So uh, that's what we recommend there. And finally, when you're facing Jaws, use Fluff's sweet spot trick, which uh, we'll bring him in to talk about a little bit later. But this is the majority of the game spent underwater here. You'll bounce back and forth between the two ports, spending your currency to purchase upgrades, more attack power essentially. After a while, it'll kick you back to the map screen. There we are. And then you sail around and then just randomly get a message that says you hit something, which is ridiculous. You can see right here we haven't hit anything, but that's beside the point. And then you'll be back on the diving screen. If you're near the land, sometimes you get the more shallow one right here. These are a bit more dangerous, so you kind of want to stay away from the land, stay more to the open ocean areas, so you can have more room to operate, more time to react to enemies that come from the bottom of the screen. But anyway, we've been picking up a lot of items from these enemies here, so now for more context as to what we're picking up and what we can do with them, let's bring in our resident items expert, Blaze. All right, let's talk about the items you will find under the sea in Jaws. Had to resist the urge to break into song right there, under the sea. But anyway, first we have the shells. For some reason, this is the currency in the world of Jaws. Not concerned about money, but if you can get me some shells, you can uh, redeem these for a transmitter, attack upgrades, and more strobes, which uh, the professor will talk about. Use these to take down Jaws at the end of the game. Second, we have crabs, which pick one of these up. Inexplicably, these speed up your speed under the sea as the diver. And then finally, you have the star, which is just worth points. So once again, if you're in some points battle going back 30 years with your best friend growing up or a sibling, grab as many of these as possible. Be the king of the points. More power to you for never letting that go. Yeah, more power to you. Thank you very much, Blaze. Keeping those rivalries alive years and years later. I will say, I think it's around 30,000 points. That's when the submarine shows up, so uh, be on the lookout for that. You get to take an extra bit of damage when you're in the submarine. But then again, it falls apart after one hit. I'm not sure who made this flimsy piece of garbage, but uh, if a jellyfish can take it down. But you'll see a little bit later how useless that is. As we try to get to the opposite ports, we can buy our first upgrade, which is going to be the transmitter. 
which Blaze mentioned just shows us Jaws' proximity to us by beeping. Speaking of Jaws' proximity, he's right up on us right here. You can see his health meter over on the right, we're not even doing a dent to him right now. Uh, let's bring in our resident boss expert, Gary, to see if he, he has any tips on taking down Jaws underwater. Gary? It's Scary Gary's Boss Beaters. All right, Jaws himself, the titular character here in Jaws, is actually not that difficult. The jellyfish, as the professor explained, are a much larger concern in this game, and in this battle in particular, a lot of the times, if they're on the screen, you want to blast away in front of or behind Jaws as he comes on the screen. Hopefully you have a power of at least five at this point when you're trying to take him on, and uh, you'll just whittle down that health. Watch out for the enemies. In fact, prioritize dodging the enemies. Take down Jaws when you have openings. And uh, yeah, good luck. And we're moving on to the above water battle next. Yep, once we take him down, we'll throw it back to Gary for that. But we have our transmitter now, as you can see. Beeping to let us know where Jaws was compared to us. And we bounce back to the first port. We got our first attack level upgrade. It's when it really starts to go crazy, that's when you know Jaws is getting closer. You get to see his fin pop out of the water. It's rare when we get from one port to the other without having uh, bumped into anything. That's nice. Anyway. Alright, there we go. Now we hit something. And while we're working our way up to power 5 or 6 to take on Jaws, and keeping our eye out for that submarine as well as we grab a few more points, let's throw it to Fluff and get a Fluff fact about Jaws for the NES. Fluff? Here we are with yet another LJN produced game. As we covered in earlier classes for LJN games, LJN themselves had nothing to do with the actual development of any of the games bearing their name, including Jaws. The toy company transitioned into the video game industry in the late 80s by acquiring licenses to publish video games for a number of popular movies, television shows, and other properties. They instead outsourced the developmental duties to a small and regular handful of studios from Rare, Beam Software, and in the case of Jaws, Atlas, along with West One. Along with the Karate Kid and Gotcha the Sport, Jaws was one of the first titles released by LJN in November of 1987. How about that? I'm sure LJN was saying to themselves, hey, look how easy it is to put out a mediocre game based on a popular film property, and it's gonna sell because obviously everyone likes Jaws, everyone knows the name, everyone liked Karate Kid, everyone knew that name, you know? Either of which is an especially good game, I think Karate Kid is especially pretty underwhelming, not one of the better LJN titles. I don't know if I'm gonna go ahead and say it's one of the worst, it's probably up on that list, but that's a class for another day. So we're back in the shallows here. And we're about to hit 30,000 points, which means we'll probably find the, uh... Probably find that submarine somewhere. You've been seeing a couple of these bonus scenes we've already done. I could do without these. It's just a way to get some points. They just jam a little extra content into the game. You now they talk about pollution and global warming as being, understandably, being contributing factors to the decline in ocean life, but... How about us and our plane dropping bombs from the sky directly onto these jellyfish? I mean, I'm not saying the jellyfish don't have it coming. It's just an interesting way to deal with the problem, that's all. Also makes me wonder, why can't we just stay on our plane the whole time and maybe take down Jaws that way? Just fly back and forth if we seem to have this never-ending supply of airplane fuel. Yeah, just a way to get a few more points and earn some shells depending on how many of the uh, of the local marine wildlife that you kill and it's meant to be at random you know sometimes you can make it from one port to the next without having to worry about uh, running into anything other times you get pretty jammed up it's like every other move you're running into something by which I mean you're not but we also have these kind of mini jaws these jaws is in training which are actually more difficult and dangerous than uh, Jaws himself. Again, we're going to bring in Fluff for that interesting tip, that sweet spot of how we can avoid Jaws. Have him talk about that in just a minute. But uh, speaking of making this game a little bit easier, Fluff, I understand you have some 
cheat codes for JAWS? What do you got? There are a number of cheats for JAWS by way of developer debugging codes which were left in the game. To access these codes, plug in a second controller and hold up, left, and B while resetting the console. When you're back in the game, hold A or B on that second controller while you pause and unpause the game on the first controller and you can access a number of different shortcuts depending on where you are in the game. For instance, A in diving mode puts you back on the map screen. A on the map screen instantly hits JAWS. B on the map screen gives you an instant you've hit something message and B in the diving mode proceeds straight to the final battle with JAWS whether he was on the screen or not. Lastly, holding A plus B in diving mode nets you an extra 9 lives. These codes actually make it possible to beat the game within seconds. Jump in a time machine and show your little brother this trick in 1987 and you'll blow their minds. Good luck. Thank you very much, Fluff. Yeah, those uh, debugging codes which were left in, just these little shortcuts. There's a submarine. Usually it appears, if you hit 30,000 points, it appears at the opposite port that you're near. Like, it's not going to show up right in front of you as you uh, hit that threshold, so. You can see the thing going crazy as Jaws was right there behind us. And of course we hit something. Also, like Friday the 13th, uh, in that Jason could just kind of randomly show up on the path when you're walking around, Jaws can just kind of meander onto your screen like if he's nearby when you hit something but you don't necessarily run into Jaws himself he uh every now and then he may kind of swim onto your screen and, and take over and start swimming back and forth again not that difficult we can avoid him easily enough but starting to get to the point where we might want to think about taking him on we got power level four we want to make sure we have enough firepower to actually take down Jaws or do a decent amount of damage to him because obviously every undersea encounter is timed so if you run out of time and you haven't taken down Jaws yet he escapes and he'll get a little bit of health back and then if you don't attack him immediately after that every time you have one of these random encounters he'll gain I think it's four health back so just all the more reason to build up your weaponry collect more shells see the price goes up Every time you uh, get a new gun, pretty cheap at first, then you're spending 10 and 13 and so shells on each power up, but again, really could do without the, the bombing of the jellyfish from the plane minigame. Really not necessary, LJN, by which I mean not LJN, because again, they didn't develop this game, but there we go. I think we have more than enough shells at this stage in the game to get our power where we want it. Now we just want to make sure we get to the port. There we are. Power level 5, looking good. I guess at 5 or 6, might go for 6 here. And let's see if we can get that submarine now. And of course we hit something. While we're dealing with this, let's throw it to Fluff and get some Fluff facts about Jaws, the film series. Fluff? As always, here's a few facts about the property the game we're playing is based on. In this case, the film series Jaws. Jaws is often considered to be the first summer blockbuster. Loosely based on Peter Benchley's novel of the same name, released on June 20th, 1975, Jaws immediately became a hit and redefined commercial success at the box office. The mechanical shark they used during shooting continually malfunctioned, which forced famed director Steven Spielberg to show less, but tease more of the shark's presence in many scenes, which most credit as effectively adding to the suspense of the film. Music composer John Williams' famous score centered around just two notes, yet instantly conveyed a sense of impending dread and remains one of the most famous pieces of music in cinematic history. A number of sequels were made, including the fourth and final film bearing its name, Jaws, The Revenge, which this NES title is loosely based on, coming out the same year in 1987, and even using the same image and variation of the tagline for its box art. Thank you very much, Fluff. You can see we have the submarine here. It's a bit more agile, a little too agile there, and again, who's making this thing that a, a one-off jellyfish can take it down? 
just by rubbing up against it. Oh, to be fair, they can kill us with one hit. We're still rocking our no death run so far. Unless you're the submarine, of course. So the submarine's not gone forever. It will reappear at probably the opposite port that we're not in here, so maybe the bottom right, but you don't need it to beat this game. It doesn't really give you any extra firepower. Your gun alone is going to be enough, especially at power 5 or 6. And since we're near this next port, let's just go for 6 and then blow jaws to the, the next plane here. But yeah, I think this entire class, the entire playthrough of this game in general is, you know, about 20 minutes, and that's running on the long side for this game. You can do it more quickly, especially if you're using those uh, development hacks that uh, Fluff covered earlier, but yeah, it's it gets, even in 20 minutes, it's a bit too much, this game. It gets very samey, very quickly. I always go to bat for Friday the 13th, because I think there's more to that game. But, uh, but, I could see that, uh, there's probably a lot of people who feel the same way about this game, you know? This game doesn't get repetitive to them, whereas they may hate Friday the 13th, so... To each their own. This is fun in very small doses. But, uh, yeah, I'll be excited to finally take down Jaws here in a second. And when we do, after we get this next power up, we will bring in Fluff for that sweet spot that we've been teasing this entire class. And then hopefully make quick work of Jaws. And uh, move on to the final part of this game, which I mentioned in opening, where we use the strobes. Yes, literal strobe lights. Think that's like a nautical term or something? No. I'm trying to blind Jaws, essentially. Or at the very least, have a very interesting effect on Jaws. You'll notice the power doesn't seem to have that much of an effect on the enemies that we're firing on, or any effect. It really just seems to be for Jaws himself. So, but that's fine. That's all that matters. That was a close call right there. Really hoping there's not going to be a bonus stage at the end of this. Please don't reward me. Just get me out of the, uh... Get me out of the water. Get me back on the boat. There it is. Alright, of course. Alright, I can't take it. Let's go to Fluff and get that sweet spot tip for taking on Jaws right now with Fluff. What do you got, Fluff? When fighting Jaws underwater, there's a sweet spot just off the top of the screen where you can both hit him while being unable to be touched by the Great White himself. Go to the top of the screen, drop just one single pixel, and just like that you can begin effortlessly blasting away at Jaws, following him left and right across the screen, with the only thing to worry about in this spot being the occasional jellyfish. Yep, those darn jellyfish. I don't know if I mentioned this, you can uh, regulate the speed of the plane by holding left or right, depending on which direction you're going. So, push against the direction you're going to slow down a little bit. But uh, it really doesn't matter. It's fine, we have more than enough shells. For whatever reason, the currency of this world. Money? No thanks. Give me some shells. Can we finally make it to port? There's the sub respawn there just took a couple encounters power level six all right i'm ready let's find jaws let him come to us he just if you sit still long enough he'll show up and there we go so yeah we're not gonna use the fluff trick here we're just gonna do it the uh, the conventional way but you can see power level six how quickly Jaws' health is dropping. Turbo is always a good move when you're taking on Jaws in this stage here. We yeah, have these jellyfish. Steven Spielberg really didn't dedicate enough screen time to the real threat underwater, the jellyfish. <laughs> Appearing out of nowhere, swimming just diagonally enough to be a cause for alarm, and uh, apparently packing enough punch to take down a small submarine. The jellyfish are the real hazards of this game, if you ask me. But, uh, let's see if we can finish off Jaws. There's no way to keep the boat, in case you were wondering. He always runs up against it and destroys it. Thankfully, we have a uh, anonymous private financier who kind of has a bigger grudge against Jaws than we do, apparently, and is willing to spend any price. 
and supply any number of boats to uh, take down Jaws. And once you do, you'll be taken to the next screen and Gary take us home. Boss beat your Jaws above water. The final fight in this game. First, you want to wait until Jaws is on the closer side of that first line and centered before you use your strobe. To use your strobe, tap A. This will cause Jaws to jump out of the water and do a sweet little spin move. When Jaws' its belly is centered facing you, you want to hit B to ram him with the ship with quite a bit of speed. I'm not really sure how they maneuvered that, but uh, it works out well. And assuming you do this, look up some shark recipes, because you have just taken down Jaws. Congratulations. Thank you, Gary. I like that little gymnastic move that uh, Jaws pulls when we hit that strobe. I guess he doesn't like it, either that or it takes him back to his clubbing days and he just can't resist cutting his shape, but... If Jaws really doesn't like it, how about we just line the uh, the beaches with strobe lights you know, and turn the entire coastline into a massive 24-hour rave? Just a thought, but anyway, that's our time. That was our week at the beach here on Video Games 101. Please consider subscribing to enroll in this class if you haven't done so already. We do one of these classes every single week. We'd love to have you enrolled. Please click that like button if you don't mind. It really does help us out. Leave a comment. Did you like this game? Did you play it? When you were younger, have you played it recently? And uh, hopefully, let us know if any of our tips helped you take down this game relatively quickly. But that's our time. We'll see you next week in the same spot for next week's class. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.